Today, this morning, uh, I'm going to share with you um, how do we actually apply room revenue management concepts into restaurants. So it's not something that is totally new, but um, what's important is what are the things, what are the similarities and what are the differences. And of course, as um, revenue manager, we want to work together with the rest of the departments in the hotel to make sure we optimize the revenue. First thing, let me start with a little introduction about myself. Um, my name is Celine. I'm with Republic Polytechnic as a senior lecturer. Uh, my day job is to teach the pre-employment -tra uh, training to the students. But of course, apart from um, lecturing, um, we also do a lot of industry work. And um, we actually work very closely with industry partners on projects, okay? Besides, of course, sending interns to your hotels. But apart from that, we also have um, various type of collaborations. And uh, personally for me, before joining the um, school, I'm actually with the industry, um, from the hotel industry for almost 30 years. I started um, with F&B operations and going to front office reservation before going into sales and revenue management. And a large part of my job uh, prior to joining, um, I actually with a hotel company where I actually work on um, pre-opening hotels as well as owner management and I also go into HR management um, before just before leaving that company to join the school. And apart from all these things that we have done, um, for the past two years, um, we were very much focusing on getting our students to actually work with industry to come up with, um, to actually get take their learning to the next level by understanding what the industry is all about and giving them real data to work on. So I'm pleased to share that over the last two years, we had two student groups who actually went for international competition, working with new, uh, real data. A group of them, um, for those of you who were here yesterday, you saw them on stage, where they actually took part on the HSMAI first marketing case competition. But the other one which we are actively participating is to make sure that our students are also provision in reading data from SDR, which all, most of you are actually subscribed to. So we actually participate in the student study, market study competition for the past two years. And I'm pleased to say that um, our students did well, came in first on the first year, and second year they went into the final. All right, so without further uh, delay, let me um, share with you what I'm gonna go through today. But before that, I would like you to log on to Slido there's just two simple polls that I'd like um, all of you to share with me so that I also have got some um, information about um, all of you. Okay, you can either use the QR code or just log on to slido.com and key in the session numbers. Okay. The first question I have for everyone is currently have you already started practicing revenue management in the restaurant space or you wanted to start but do not know how or you are already um, doing it day in, day out? So perhaps you could actually put in your um, poll. Okay. Very good. Okay, I have about 34 now. All right, so most of us are saying that almost started, okay? But I'm sure after today, you will find the, the, the motivation to start very soon. Okay, right. Next question I have for all of you is that for those who have already started or some who have not started, is there any particular reason why you are practicing or not yet practicing revenue management in the restaurant space. No restaurant on property, fair one. <laughs> don't need to do that. Okay, don't know how, no bandwidth. Currently not my area. Okay, very good. Yeah, just keep the comments coming, okay, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, what we want is also to know where is actually um, the issues that are, 
that is actually stopping you from pursuing this because all of us know that it's actually important. And the next two slides which I'm going to share with you is the reason why it's important for us to start looking at restaurant revenue management. Okay, some statistics, you know, as revenue manager, we love statistics, all right? So this morning, what I'm going to share with you is some inf uh, statistics that I have gathered. The first one is from STR. This is actually the report that um, some key statistics that I've actually ex extract from STR Host Profitability Report, okay? It actually shows here in the year 2019, 2020 and 2021, how are the hotels doing in terms of profitability? Okay, uh, but of course, um, I must share that this data, there's only 16 hotels that actually contributed. Okay, but they are well represented from upper mid scale all the way to luxury hotel or full service hotel. Okay, so as you can see from here, revenue per available room over the last three years definitely uh, it has dropped. Uh, unfortunately, at the before when I was preparing the slide, 2022 numbers are not in yet, so I couldn't share with you. But um, as we see the industry recovering, in terms of how is F&B contributing to the hotel, generally in terms of its contribution, it's still hovering around 35%. Okay, whether is it during good time or bad time, and of course 2019, we know most of us was doing very well. So we could actually use that as an estimation on what we want to pursue for um, 2023 onwards, right? But one thing which is very glaring that I'm sure all of you have noticed is the cost itself. The F&B expenses, departmental expenses, went all the way up to 85%, okay? And in fact, one of the key contributor, of course, we all also more or less know is from labor costs because now it's very expensive when we actually get um, our manpower. And my, uh, we also know that in most of our hotels, restaurant doesn't pay rent. So you can imagine if we were to add in rent into this, these numbers, the profitability is going to be even worse. So there is definitely an urgency for us to look at how we can actually help the restaurants in our hotels to maximize their revenue. Next is actually um, some information from the independent F&B services. This statistics is, uh, this graph is actually taken uh, from the statistic from the Department of Statistics, okay? And it covers um, the four key areas in F&B services. That include restaurants, fast food restaurants, food court, as well as food caterer, okay? So as you can see um, from Maybe you can't see, it's very far, but <laughs> okay. from the right is actually 2019 and all the way to, um, sorry, to, to the left is 2019 and all the way to the right is actually 2023. This, the figures as of March 2023, okay? So in terms of um, top line revenue, you could see that um, more or less independent restaurant revenue wise is actually going uh, very much already reached 2019 level, okay? But there's one key changes which all of us need to be aware that for the independent restaurant, the online contribution has actually gone up. From 10% in 2019, of course with pandemic, a lot of people start using the apps to, 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 um, to buy their food and that is not going away because even until today, it's still hovering around 25%. So this is something that is changed. And of course, apart from this change, we also know that a lot of independent restaurants has also embarked on the digitalization of their operation. And with that, it's actually good news for revenue managers because that means we get a lot more data. Because one of the biggest headache that why it takes us a long time to actually start revenue management on restaurant is the lack of data. Okay, so now perhaps we could start with something. May not be a, a full suite like what we get from all the room's um, data, but at least there is something. All right? Okay, 
Now we'll go back to our basics. This definition of revenue management, I'm sure all of us are aware. Okay? So how do we actually apply this to the restaurant? Similarly, restaurant has got certain conditions like our hotel rooms. Okay? So what we need to do is to look at what are these conditions that make it conducive to practice revenue management? Okay, first thing first, just like the hotel, restaurant has a similar characteristic of having fixed capacity. Okay, the way the restaurant is designed, how they craft out areas for the kitchen, for dining, for their um, washrooms, and etc., is very much fixed. Yes, restaurant has got certain flexibility. They may add a table here or there, add another seat here and there, but on an on a overall basis, it's still quite fixed. You could not actually just add in additional space just because you know it's Chinese New Year, your restaurant is going to be busy. So very similar to our hotel. We can't just build another tower or another few rooms. So this is one characteristic that is similar. Next, talking about perishable inventory. A lot of restaurant operator or manager, they always focus on the perishable ingredients that is used to come up with their menu items. But they forgot that when we talk about revenue management, perishability is actually the seat or the tables that is available in your restaurant to make money. All right? So this is actually one area that we need to actually um, make it um, um, make it known to our restaurant operators, okay, especially um, those of them who is actually focusing very much on operation. When we talk about perishability here, the inventory is not so much of the food items that is required to make your menu, but it's actually more about how do we actually maximize the space that we have, be it a table or the seats that is available. Of course, it depends on various different um, restaurant style. Okay, um, the perishability can be actually more. Um, it can be actually a lot more um, important for some as compared to the others. All right. Next, the time variable demand. Okay, as I have mentioned earlier, with digitalization, we are glad to see that there's a lot of restaurant implementing reservation service now. Right. And in fact, apart from doing um, implementing reservation service, some of them, especially the re a very popular one, they go to the extent to limit the number, um, the number of uh, your, your time duration that you could spend in the restaurant, especially on peak period. Right? I'm sure um, all of you have the same experience that during um, some, some special occasion where you actually book a restaurant, they mentioned that you have to utilize within one and a half hours. Okay, so that is actually um, something that um, makes restaurant dining more predictable. Because prior to this, a lot of time, it's very hard for the restaurant operator to know how much time the customer is going to spend at your restaurant. Okay, how much time are they going to occupy that seat? Very, very hard. But then, of course, with digitalization, we can actually make that a little bit more predictable. Next, as we have saw earlier, definitely in terms of fixed costs, just like any hospitality business, it is extremely high in the restaurant space. So this is another criteria, another condition why revenue management is a must because it's very difficult for us to contain the costs, especially in like in Singapore where we have got we have got um, we have got this limitation on um, having enough manpower in the in the industry right and last but not least in order for us to practice revenue management we need to have the market segmented okay we need to think of how can we actually understand the different customers who come into our restaurant okay many a time um, most people would only um, see the customer on certain only a few segment but the better, the more segment that we can actually um, identify, the better it is for us to actually target the customer, right? So, of course, like yesterday, what Amadeus have shared, 
the, the different type of travelers in 2033, I'm sure in the, in, in the restaurant space, we will be able to study the different customer. Why are they here in our restaurant for a certain period or certain day of day or week? Okay, so these five um, characteristics or condition is nothing new to all of us, but we need to actually I, um, we need to actually study them in the restaurant space. How unique are they compared to rooms rev, um, res, uh, rooms revenue? Okay. Next, um, I know it's a bit far, so initially I wanted everyone to group together to do a case study, but I think it may be a challenge with um, this setting. Okay, let's look at this together. Okay, so over here, I have a restaurant. Okay, a simple restaurant, R, which is actually a high volume sushi restaurant in a busy MRT um, station. Okay, so the management team, they will all gather together to talk about how should they define capacity in their restaurant? Okay, so we start with the head chef. The executive chef said, mm, capacity should be determined by the size of the kitchen. Because if you don't have um, the space to make the food, you can't actually get customers to buy your food. Next, we have the sushi, uh, sushi chef. Say so yes, even you have a big rest, uh, kitchen space, it doesn't help if I don't have staff. No staff, nobody make the sushi, I can't sell. Okay. Next, we have the restaurant manager, okay, who says that, yes, good um, in terms of food preparation, we need to have the space, we need to have the people. But again, unless we can actually um, switch to take out or take away, otherwise we are always constrained by the space we have, the number of tables we have in the restaurant. Okay, and of course, um, the chef also mentioned that even in terms of the capacity in the restaurant, you can only sit up to 20. Even if you have got more table or less table, maximum is only 20. So the question I have for all of us is, since restaurant capacity can be determined by these four different elements, what are the pros and cons that each of these capacity um, definition have. Okay, so maybe we can take a moment, discuss a little bit about ourselves to see what are the pros and cons. Okay, I'll give five minutes for all of you to discuss with the one next to you. Can still see from the back, right? Okay, um, do I have any volunteer to share what you have discussed? A pro or a con in using this as a way to define the capacity for the restaurant? Anyone would like to volunteer? Yes, you're volunteering. Ah, oh, that's nice. I think, uh, hi, good morning, everybody. I think uh, first things first, what we were discussing here is what uh, to define who your customer is, because the moment you look at that uh, description saying MRT, busy, etc., uh, first is defining who the customer is, you know, and that will then define the other consequent items in terms of menu design, menu items. Uh, you know, uh, it's all about who's going to be our customer. 
if you're talking about a fine dining restaurant at uh, the MRT, which is quite rare, uh, you know, um, then 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 that changes whole logistics and the planning and all, right? But I think the first point here, and I'm not sure if it's mentioned here, is that who's our customer? What is that average spend we're going to get? You know, how much time do they actually have? And then we go backwards rather than us coming up limitations. Some other things like the kitchen and all, you know, with today's technology can be centralized, can be, you know, put in some place in Tuas maybe. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> um, but I think, I think let's start with the customer first. That's what I would, I mean, we would suggest. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, this is what a revenue manager would think because we don't really care about what operations says, right? <laughs> So we have our own uh, perspective. We will just tell the operation, okay, don't talk about operations um, limitation for now. Let's talk about who our customer is. Okay, uh, yes, of course, that is very important. Uh, but we will come to that later. But most important thing is, why do you think restaurant management team, which is the operation team, are talking about all this, um, using these elements to define the capacity? So what are the, what is the pros and cons? Anyone else would like to share your view? Yes. <laughs> so I think that it's important because just like a hotel, we need to know what our inventory is that we can sell. If we don't know what we can actually sell, what the capacity is, then we can't maximize it. Yes. So that's a pro to actually figuring out what the whether it's seating or selling because you should be able to do both if you do takeaway but um if we don't know what that line is that our operational team can actually deliver on then we might be falling short or we might be um over promising and we have people leave and then we're in a whole nother problem so it's just like with hotel inventory you're going to maximize what's available that's right thank you very much yes so the operation part, um, definitely uh, we need to take into consideration. Um, I have someone put out your hand. Oh. Yes. No, I just answered the question of pros. I think we were discussing that the quality of service is important, right? So obviously, if you have the right amount of space as a chef, you can do the whole like efficiency thing. And therefore, the quality is definitely higher. For a service standpoint, I think... Um, definitely you can deliver a better service right with the right space so if you are too small and too cramped the customer experience is totally lost yeah and then uh, the cons I mean I, don't, I, I didn't hear what Jessica said but I was, think, I was thinking about the cons right like uh, do you mention about the number of seats and you can do both takeaway and sitting right you mentioned that that's a very very management thing right we're also discussing the same thing um, but also like we were discussing in Japan you know how just remove the seats like just standing standing sushi counter and you can do as many as you want and people have a shorter time to eat, right? Yeah. To maximize revenue, but yeah, so thanks. That's it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Shung Wen. Um, yes, I have got this gentleman over here. So one other way to look at it is if as an owner, I'm investing half a million dollars to set up the shop, then what's my ROI expected? And then use that as a baseline for assumptions on if, if two years is an acceptable ROI to the owner, then what should my model be between takeaway, sit out, what are my top selling items, how long does it take, then labor constraints in place. So I'll use the investment and ROI as a baseline to move forward. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is a very interesting problem. In uh, university, we call this the linear programming. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, any, any familiar, uh, anyone familiar with linear programming? Uh, it's part of our operations research. So um, basically what you can do is like, a, so you have, um, you, in order to ep optimize your revenue, then you have, uh, okay, your expected revenue for uh, fine dining uh, or uh, expected revenue of uh, uh, dine, uh, sit down, dining, takeaway and all that thing. And then you put all your constraints in the equations and things like that. You should be able to, uh, uh, get the um, get 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 it uh, get solve the problem uh, with a constraint and it, it, it's a solvable problem. Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. There's no problem we cannot solve, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. The reason why I bring out this case study to talk about these uh, four key elements is because um, a lot of us um, we actually neglect the importance to understand the operation. 
And this is actually extremely important in the restaurant setting because restaurants, uh, in terms of the interval time that we could actually use to uh, maximize revenue is very different from rooms. Okay, So in a sense that if a table is, uh, is occupied and when the guests leave, we need to know very well how much time is needed to turn over that table to reset the table for the next customer. And you don't have one night or one day to actually do that. You need to go to the minute details into how many minutes you could actually max, um, use so that you can actually turn around the table for the next customer so that you could actually make uh, more revenue. Okay, Very different from room because in the room's perspective, if the room is very dirty and the housekeeping need extra 15 minutes, you, will always, you can always allocate that room to a customer who come in late. Right? In the restaurant's perspective, especially during peak hour, the lunch hour, the dinner hour, if you don't have enough time to turn over that table, you lost the opportunity to make revenue for the, the, the seat. So that is why it is actually one of the key difference between restaurant and rooms that we need to actually look at the operation components. It's very important that we need to understand how much time the customer actually spend with us from the time they actually step into the restaurant until the time they leave. And not only that, the total time, we also need to know exactly how long it takes for them to, re, um, to actually arrive, get to their seat, make their order, serve, and then pay money before they leave. Okay, So this is something whereby it, it is actually very important in the restaurant perspective and it will only, we can only know if we understand the hotel, uh, the restaurant operations. And this is also some, I'm sure some of you will get it when you are trying to implement it in um, asking for data from the restaurant. They will tell you that we are all very busy. We have no time to actually do this study, to actually get this data. But without this information, no matter how good we are, there is limitation to how much revenue we can help the restaurant to maximize it. All right. So this is actually one key difference that all of us need to be aware. Before we embark, we need to know how can we actually get this information. Okay. The front of house um, operation flow, that will actually help a lot. Okay. Of course, back of the house, um, that is something that you can study, but, um, in revenue management, we always focus mainly on what the customer facing um, flow is. And because that is the way that we can actually influence. Okay. So apart from that, of course, the other measurement is we saw just now in the various different way of capacity management. Okay. Uh, capacity uh, definition. But what is actually lacking is actually the time period. Okay. And in revenue management, we need to actually have that time period attached to the revenue. So in restaurant revenue management, rash patch is perhaps a better measurement um, as compared to average check, okay? Because rash patch actually take into consideration the occupancy, how well we utilize the tables and seats in our restaurant, okay? To actually make um, revenue for each and every seat, okay? It take care of average check as well as the capacity utilization rate. Okay, next, of course, with that formula, then we could actually look into the different strategy or tactics that we could use in terms of demand management, how to get more customers during low season or low period, okay, or how, what can we do in the operation efficiency area to make sure that we can actually take in more customers during the peak hours. Okay. And of course, uh, apart from that, um, this both, uh, both levers will be critical for us to come up with the various strategy that we could help the restaurant to actually maximize their revenue. Okay. So with all revenue management, um, data is very important. So what I have here is a list of um, data points that we could actually um, start collecting before we could actually um, start doing our forecasting. All right. So one of the uh, most of them is actually quite similar to rooms, except that it's actually in the restaurant setting. 
But the first item over here, which is actually the throughput time and rate, is actually exactly um, what I have mentioned. The time spent or the time taken for the customer to actually achieve each step in our service cycle. This is something whereby we need to actually get. But of course, um, like I mentioned earlier, it could be additional manpower that is required okay, to actually do this study. Operation will tell you, especially peak hour, they have no time to do it. So what you could do, you can always engage us. We can send students to help you to do this. <laughs> All right, so this is actually uh, one thing which is critical, important, but we know that um, a lot of restaurants, uh, operations, they do have, they do have a limitation, especially in today's, um, current climate where we don't have enough, um, manpower to run operations. This could be a luxury for them. But, uh, if you need help and if you do not have got, um, system to actually help you to do this, you could always engage local, um, institution like ours to actually help you to look at this. All right. So, of course, apart from the throughput time and rate, we can look at um, the arrival, how many arrivals that we have got, okay? As well as um, the dining duration, um, table occupancy, and followed by the rest of the other uh, matrices. All right? So, with that, we come to a summary of what I have just shared this morning. Um, what we have actually looked at this morning is just um, a very basic to see where is the similarity as well as the differences between rooms and restaurant revenue management. Okay, so restaurant revenue management provides um, the managers with an operating framework, okay, focused on making more money without sacrificing the customer's comfort. Okay, so what's important is like hotels, the operating environment of restaurants that we have saw earlier is conducive to practice revenue management. Okay, these are the conditions that we have looked into this morning. And perhaps we can actually start using RevPash to actually, uh, as a matrix, to actually measure the success of our restaurants. And of course, in order to be successful, the management process has to be data driven and we could always start with collecting data. All right. And once data is collected, the rest of the revenue process can follow through, starting with our forecasting. Then we can come up with strategy and tactics to help the restaurant. All right. So with that, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for listening to me. Okay. And, um, as, uh, what, uh, Jackie has mentioned earlier, we are coming out with, um, a program for um, HSMAI members as well, especially for um, those of you who are based in Singapore, okay? Because um, this is actually a certified program where at the end of the program, you could actually get a professional certificate and leading up to a specialist diploma uh, by the Polytechnic. This will be the topics that we are covering, okay? And um, the first course is going to start in July. And for those of you who are interested, you could scan this QR code, okay? Or you can connect with me on LinkedIn and I can actually share more information when um, the course material um, information is out. All right? Before I go, any question from anyone? Yes. Is there any magic number for allocation of you know when we have rooms and breakfast <laughs> that's a million dollar question nowadays uh, because fnb is not making money they want to make it from rooms right so is there a magic formula you would give us which solves that uh, it doesn't need to be different by wholesalers versus fit i'm just throwing it out there yeah is, is there magic number uh, from as far as i know there's no magic number because Every um, hotel, every restaurant is unique in its own way. So before we could even come up with any number, um, important thing is we really need to look at um, the various data points to understand the business better. Then we could actually come up with a good um, benchmark or a good baseline to start with and uh, work towards um, a target. Right. Anyone else has got a question?
Uh, it was interesting looking at the poll in the beginning, you know, why haven't we gone further on this yet? And uh, I just browsed it quickly, but I think there was two themes. Theme number one was we don't know how to do it. And I'm, you've obviously given, you know, a framework here and you're offering more of a framework. And uh, Cornell also does a great study, which half was based in Singapore uh, originally. So I think, you know, the answer to that is available. Have you seen best practices in terms of uh, finding the time? Because that's, I think, the second theme that was there, that my theory is you need to have somebody dedicated to this, which is maybe hard to do when it's a restaurant uh, that's extremely lean because you pointed out that profitability is a problem. But if you've got larger groups or hotels and things like that, honestly, I think if you deploy a full person against it who's trained in this, uh, I think you can uh, deliver miracles. But have you seen best practices uh, emerge uh, on the, along those lines of how to create the capacity to deliver on this? Based on um, like what um, the two speakers mentioned yesterday, um, so far um, we don't see um, a lot of best practices for restaurant yet. Okay, and uh, rightfully you mentioned yes, it is actually um, the time. How do we find time to do this? Right. So with a lot of um, initiative, from what I see is that um, the initial part is always difficult, but um, instead of um, postponing it, um, perhaps you can look at uh, how can we get resources. Um, what I, what I mean is that, um, perhaps we could actually work with, um, of course, not only my institution, but a lot of institutions. We are actually looking for opportunity for our students to learn a real world problem. So we could actually come in to help you by, uh, looking at, um, how we could actually start to actually collect data and then from there, then work with the management to see what are the things that we could solve. And then from there, we can actually continue and um, start with a small um, target. And then from there, we uh, once we can get everyone in the organization to think data first, to actually uh, have a revenue management mindset, then I believe the restaurant will actually get into there. But I think a lot of time, um, not only restaurant, but in a lot of operations, we are always being um, focusing on how to actually fight fire on a daily basis. And we forgot about the strategic part so um, one one good thing is that um, I would like to um, share with all is that we are starting to see um, industry partners coming to us to ask us to help them to do the heavy lifting, especially on the research part, where we give uh, the students an opportunity to learn real world stuff. And at the same time, we help the business partner to do the heavy lifting in terms of the research where you cannot find um, resources or time to do. So that is actually one way perhaps we could start with that. And then after which, then we can see how it progressed and continue with that later, uh, the, the rest of the bits later. All right. I hope I answer your question. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thanks very much. Um, it's 9.50. Yeah. So we can actually go on to the next session.